everyone. Welcome to Placement Dogs. I'm your host Disha and today we have with us Arvind. Hi Arvind. Hi Disha. It's lovely to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here as well. Let's start with your introduction. Right, introduction. So hi guys, I'm Arvind. I've been part of this VIT campus for four years like everyone else. And um, I'm part of mechanical branch. Uh, and I just passed out recently in year 2021. So other than that, um, college was fun and uh, pretty much placements towards the end will be nervous. Definitely will be nervous, but it's all part of the process. So you have to get used to it. But other than that, uh, those people who have been to campus and not on, been on campus, I will suggest you guys just keep working on to it. One day I'll definitely call you guys back. So don't worry about it. And more introduction, I think I just follow beyond and you guys will get to know me better. So we'll proceed with that. Okay, so can you tell me more about the company that you've chosen? Uh, yes, okay, about Echo Tech. Uh, I'm currently working in Singapore. So in Echo Tech, uh, I have been I have been working there from January during my fourth year. I worked as six months intern over there. So during that time, I was uh, given more exposure. Uh, it's not like a desk job or it's not like on-field job. And uh, uh, they have didn't uh, ask me for uh, such a thing that you should know this or you should follow that. Uh, the company is basically an AI uh, visual analytics company who does CCTV surveillance and defense. And uh, the role I play over there, I'm currently the, over there as an R&D engineer, executive R&D engineer. Uh, since I worked there for six months, intern, they automatically given me the executive post. Uh, along the way, I've worked in this company. It's been more fun. It's not like a, such a big company. And all. It's, not, it's not a very big MNC company. It's, not, it's a medium scale company in Singapore. They have a good turnover every year. They have a good profit. Uh, such companies like this are a good place to learn and explore as well. Because the number of things you get to do over there will be completely more and will keep you much more occupied and a lot of things to learn. Uh, so I would suggest that you know, in my preference, I would suggest a company like this to go for to even though if bigger companies turn up, uh, which they did. But I still prefer to go here because the, uh, the working environment is a must. Uh, followed by how much you can gather info from it. Uh, I mean, in this company also, I get to work in projects which is like worth one billion. So compared to like that, it's not a bad exposure area. So that's why I prefer to go to this company. And since I'm much more indulged in robotics and AI, I felt here would be a good choice since it's currently the development age of robotics and AI and deep technology wherever you go. Right. So there are so many companies. So like when one is choosing to go for off campus placement or even on campus placements, how is one supposed to decide which company to go for? Okay. Every person have their own perspective on how they want to decide to go for a company. Um, for example, more like a more detailed perspective, like how I look into in off campus placements are such a way that first the company, how much people they hire per year, how much people leave the company per year. What is the annual turnover salary? How much income they're generating? How much outcome? Uh, how much number of sales? How much? How much number of technology developing per year? So there's a number, of, lot of factors involved here. It's not easy to just decide on a company, uh, and all these things is available on the net, including their reviews, including their uh, the income tax and everything else is available on net. You just have to explore them and understand them, how it's being done. And when you're approaching a company, you go sit for the placement over there. Uh, you can actually answer them more fluently depending upon the variables. You have, you have known about the company. Since everything is available, you're just going to get to know them about the projects you're going to work on, learn about the projects, learn uh, how you can tell them how you would integrate a skill along with it. So these are a number of things you can overcome your placements. And I haven't been on in-campus placements. I choose not to sit for in-campus placements. I want to try my luck outside. Uh, even though in-campus placements have a lot of companies coming over, off-campus, it's quite a huge world out there. There's a number of companies, unlimited number of companies. It's just... Uh, depends on whether you choose the right one or not. Right. So let's say one is uh, planning to go for off-campus placement. So how do you think one should prepare for it? Okay. So uh, regards to off-campus placements, how should one prepare for it? Um, actually, to be honest, I didn't do a lot of preparations. I'm more of a practical person. So when I went for my placements and everything else, the first round would be basically uh, with one of the people who has already been working there as a technical person. So uh, I'll be talking with them. He'll be getting to know me. They judge the person, the character, the personality, along with how much knowledge he has on this particular topic or subject. 
So I used to read a lot of books, technical books. I used to read a lot. I used to explore. I used to research. So with all these areas coming inside the picture, it would give me more understanding and confidence to speak with them. And if the opposite person uh, is also good at talking and they're able to get in, into the same thing as you, it'd be very much big thing. If not, you still have to stick with them. Just keep on looking at their eyes, talk whatever you want. Then I just hope that just go on to the next round. So this is how you should look for off-campus placements. Just be yourself over there. Don't freak out or don't fret. Just make sure that whatever you have to deliver, you deliver properly. Right. So uh, one, when a person has chosen which company to apply for, what is the process like? How are we supposed to apply for a company? And like, when are we supposed to do that? Uh, okay. So um, when you decide on a company, like for, for myself, I shortlisted about 50 to 60 companies, right? Since it's off campus, that means the number of companies going to reject you is going to be much more higher. All right. So I shortlist about 50 to 60 companies, which sits in my portfolio. My area of specialty is defense and robotics. So I can work with anything in relationship with that. So uh, with talking about all these things, um, coming to the mind and most for this 50 to 60 companies, I have to choose them perfectly. I have to align with them, decide on them exactly what company I'm going to enter into, what portion I'm going to sit into. And also I need to make sure that I have all the necessary skills requirement completed. There'll be a few things which like mandatory and there'll be a few optional. So I always have to make sure that your mandatory is fully completed and your optional, just make sure you focus on two to three, which is going to be there. And uh, there'll be sometimes the company says that they expect people to have two or three years experience. Even if a fresher applies for that, they still agree to it. Uh, why? Because in the end, they just want to see whether you have the actual experience on the field more comparatively. Even we're working earlier in college, you have worked for six months of internships twice or thrice, it automatically comes to one of yours. So this much of experience is more than enough for them for taking inside the company, which is able to compete with the other people sitting for the same interview. And um, the other procedures you need to uh, keep in touch or make sure that you're on the right hand, be more professional with them. Uh, the way you talk with them, the way you approach them, then uh, from the start of the call to the end of the call, how you uh, complete it. Because I had my interviews online and offline as well. So over there, when I went over there, I had to be properly dressed. And uh, they go through my resume, they, they go through my CV. Then uh, they, they used to ask me tons and tons of questions. So depending upon that, how I choose to answer them matters. That is the final thing. And uh, hopefully, if you clear the first one or two rounds, some companies do have exams as well, such as uh, a one, like, can choose the right answer exams kind of stuff or uh, i've never came across a pro programming exam yet because uh my discipline is not programming so i didn't choose that uh but even though i still have uh having knowledge in that helps a lot that is a very honest thing i'm a mechanical student i have knowledge in electrical control engineering and programming so i i since i choose robotics i need to know all the three along with my mechanical and all of these things do help me a lot in finalizing the company which i want to enter into so when you applied for all these companies, uh, what was the application and selection process like? Mm, okay, so the application and selection process, as I said, they have a set of requirements which we need to know of. Uh, for example, the, the most general basic number of requirements, depending upon a fresher, past or graduate, to look into off-campus company is uh, the working condition. So they'll ask you, they'll, they'll say you have to be more presentable, you need to know basic things like Excel, Word, PowerPoint, some programming languages like C++, uh, maybe Java or Python. Python is a must nowadays. Then other than that, these are like a few of the basic requirements. If you're, I'm, a lo I'm a robotics guy, so for me, they expect me to have known about ROS, Blue Prism, uh, then if possible, Gazebo, LT Spice. So all these things come to the picture. And the optionals, they say that if you have knowledge in all the three particular fields, including SOLIDWORKS and every other particular software which you can list over there, Rhinoceros, it can be anything. So depending upon the software usage, how much you know about it, in the end, that's how they select you. And once you once you just clear the initial selection of them knowing that, okay, this person knows this much, they'll ask you for your resume. So once you give in your resume, they'll go through it. So whenever I gave my resume to any of the companies, they didn't start from the top, they start from the below. So below, I have my pay, I have my paper presented, uh, I wrote about two, two papers, so I've made, I have mentioned over there, followed by the projects, then my work experience, then above that was my education. So they started from the very bottom all the way to the top. Since in off-campus, it's more practical. 
they expect the guy to be more practical. They don't want them to teach. They want them to you guys to know everything and come to the company. In such a way they can actually push you into the work more faster compared to the amount of time they want to spend teaching you. So this is the difference in off campus and on campus placements. Right. So after the application and selection processes are done, how were the interview rounds? So uh, the interview rounds, I have sit for companies in UK, US, and in Singapore. Uh, I don't know, I haven't approached any Indian companies. So in abroad, the uh, the more uh, the interview procedures was they were actually quite friendly, to be very honest. Because nowadays, if anything goes wrong, they, anyone can just put a picture of a company and LinkedIn or anything like that. So the application procedures, which were company you went to, it was they were very nice. They were actually very friendly, to be very honest, and uh, they make sure that. I was able to understand them. They were able to understand me where I was getting at. And uh, the most people uh, said, said that I was more practical. I mean, I was able to work in any of the environment they gave me. And uh, the way you talk, I guess, like I said, and the way you present it, they will know, they will be able to distinguish you within other people. They have been recruiting for a quite number of time. They are, these companies have been existing for more than 12 to 15 years. So all of them knows how to recruit an employee. And this employee has to suit all their needs. That is the main, that's the main perspective. If you're able to understand what is the exact thing they need, and if you're able to stick on to that till the end, there's no chance they will say no to you. During the interview talk with the final time, that's the best place to exactly know which point you have to stick to till the end. Right. So what was your strategy and what kind of resources did you use for an off-campus placement? Uh, strategies. Like I said, I shortlisted 200, 300 companies and I started filtering them out depending upon the culture, work experience. That was my first category. I sorted them out first. Then after that, uh, they have to have robotics in the company, somewhat of robotics or AI. So from that, I started removing a few more companies. Then the turnover rate, the turnover rate depends upon how much salary they can give a person as well. So I have to look into that and the gross salary margin, how much you're paying a person particular year and depending upon number of employees in the company. So this was the third thing I have to look into. So again, I started filtering people, uh, filtering companies out. Then I, uh, beyond that, then there's a few other things like the projects they're holding on to, how it recognizes the company in the current country, and uh, and uh, how much growth they're going to show. Some companies have a good growth amount of 27 to 14, uh, 14 to 27 percent. So those companies are growing companies. Some companies like uh, big scale MNCs companies have a growth of about seven to nine percent, or they have more than that also it depends. So. I have to choose a company within that range. I saw them out of different classes. So once I saw them out of different classes, small scale, medium scale, and large scale companies, I started applying to them one by one. So when I start applying to them one by one, automatically I will get rejection letters in a week's time or two weeks time. Usually you have to remember, you have to apply to companies which is not just posted recently, but already have posted a week back or two weeks back. Why? Because they wait till the last moment to get the number of high number of employees to start selecting from them. If you apply now and if you want to wait for a response, it won't be like that. So that is why it's always important to look into a company which is already put out their recruiting poster or already put up in LinkedIn or anywhere else possible saying that we're looking for this particular personnel and this particular job offer is open. And it has to be exactly two weeks or beyond to apply for the company. Right. So this was like how to actually apply for the job. but. How is one supposed to prepare for an off-campus placement? Okay, to prepare for an off-campus placements, to be very honest, I didn't prepare much for an off-campus placements. Just trust your skills. Like for example, like I said, I'm a robotics guy. Even though I choose mechanical and there was no such thing as mechatronics and robotics during my time frame, um, I still prefer to choose to go for the subject. And I had to prepare in accordance with the particular subject. And so, like I said, I have to learn ROS, I have to learn Blue Prism, I also have to learn Gazebo, I also learn SOIDOS, I learn LT Spice, I learn Python. So all the particular things, wherever it's applicable, I learn them. And coming to the company, uh, they taught me more related to Python and uh, Java, definitely. Uh, even though I have no, uh, uh, even though they, they used to use other things like Angular and everything else, I have, no, I have no nothing about them. I'll tell them very frankly, I have no knowledge in this. So they assign me projects depending upon whatever skills I have. And all these skills is not going to be built about six months time or one year time. I started from second year till all the way till the end. That's how I start building my skills slowly and steadily. And 
if you ask me it's uh, it's not true workshops or webinars even though they can help you a lot if you will understand a lot it makes your knowledge grow a lot i prefer still going with books i don't buy each book i prefer ebooks so ebooks since is available on the internet itself you can browse through them try the various projects over there then you can also learn more from ebooks as well since it's if you, i had my own personal library if you ask me if i have one terabyte of ebooks with me so i just go to them every day i just revise with them and if you go to see for this particular company i used to choose particular books respective to it and i would go through them and that's how i finalize myself and get ready for the interviews yeah so my next question is how can one build the perfect resume for an off campus placement okay for a perfect resume um it has to be very simple don't go for colors or anything else just be very very simple black and white keep it straight neat enough make sure that whatever you are saying has been a very few lines and make sure they understand don't use a lot of complicated words so uh like i said since they start from the end the last thing will be your skills definitely and about that it's going to be about your patents if published and about that it's going to be about your projects so if you have a good number of decent projects so you have to put up just put from which time to which time frame you've done it along with that the name of the project under which campus or which well, company you've done the project and a description about short description thus sometimes you have signed an nda for some companies saying that you are not able to uh, tell all this information out so just make sure you just stick with the abstract for the project so then on top of that your work experience again same format keep all the dates towards the uh, to your left hand side and just for example you can just go 2015 2017 or 2015 to current so all this thing matters the role you played in if it's a intern mention intern over there if it's a contract mention contract over there if it's a full time just mention full time over there give exactly the details you worked in don't put additional stuff inside it will be completely pointless because if they ask you anything from it if you're unable to answer it, it they will definitely know that you're fooling them fooling around with them so it's you have to give the information very accurately in your work experience and in your projects uh in even in the projects the role you played in if you mention that that will be good enough you don't have to put the entire abstract of the project then on top of that you'll have to uh talk about a few lines maybe just give them a very general intro then again uh finally where ever you have studied uh, from your 10th 12th if you have done advanced diploma or even diploma I mentioned that as well if you have done btech then again mention that if you are current make sure you put current over there if you have completed mention completed over there then on top of it finally which is your header page give your name give your contact number give your mail address that's more than enough right so can you tell us more about your internships projects and your papers okay so my internships i have worked with i think three companies i think it's a three four i think yeah okay I'm not too sure about numbers now but yes so in my second year Uh, I have worked with Mothers and Technologies, so that was the first company I worked with. So when I went when I went over there, I suggested them that uh, if you want me to work exactly on the type of machines you guys are currently working on, I will not be able to do it, and I only have one month time. So I suggested them then I suggested them this. So let's do this. Give me a project. I'll do the project for you. If the project is up to your liking, then you can grade me accordingly. So that was my end of the deal. and uh, these people like the way i presented myself and how i said that i will do it in this kind of manner uh, so they said go ahead so we did a project for them which involved automatic spray painting choosing of the right amount of paint and automatic spraying on the car so this is one of the projects which i started working on for the first time then it went well then followed by i worked uh, i i kept i came back to singapore so over here i worked in dbs bank so people ask me why did you choose a bank banks um banks are automatically entering the automated sector nowadays they used to prefer machines which do their jobs for them in banks and in highly accurate as well so uh, in dbs i learned about iot i learned about automated banking i learned about how they can completely make a bank uh, which can automate by itself doesn't have to depend upon a particular person then i also worked with other solutions as a data science engineer So over here, uh, I know I have learned about MDM and uh, about Talent and everything else. Different softwares they have implemented, S3 buckets. All this was new to me. I was not a programming student, but still I had interest in it, so I learned all about that. Then finally, I landed in Equal Tech uh, as an intern as well. So over here, um, I worked with AI visual systems. 
then um, followed by uh, again over here before I ended my intern, I proposed them that I will do a project for them. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this project, the difference is that uh, I'll build a complete robot for them uh, with NDA signed and uh, make sure that this particular ro uh, robot will be the flagship robot for the company. So it's going on well as well. So what about the papers? Okay, uh, papers. Um, okay, I'm. I've currently done with two. The first one was uh, uh, actually it's called autonomous robotic all day vehicle. So uh, it was a very simple paper. I just wanted to try how it was in the first time. So I did it my second year, I guess. Yes. So that's where it started. Then uh, after that, uh, during my fourth year, I joined with my junior students. Presented a paper on quantum robotics. Uh, so. We talked about how social robots use quantum technology to understand and interpret a human's, uh, human language and give a response in return. So it was a new project as well because we are dealing with quantum, uh, field, uh, quantum science and quantum computing. Then now I'm going to write another paper. Even though I've still completed college, I'm still going to write another paper. It's, it's more fun to research and get into more stuff. So I'm going to write a new paper on exoskeleton, uh, on the upper body, upper limb exoskeleton. So we just started it. Let's hopefully let's see how it goes. All right, first of all, good luck for that. And this was all very technical. Now I want you to tell me about your college life, how it was in the campus for you. OK, uh, in college life, during my first year, I'm the type of kid will be very silent. I just kept on observing my environment. Because you have to know how college works in the first place. You have to know your seniors, what a number of things are there in the college. Um, uh, there used to be technical workshops. There used to be culturals. Then there's been a lot of stuff. Uh, every week, there'll be a place where you guys can go and sit down, see a lot of number of things, cultures happening around, uh, different clubs come and, you know, showcase themselves. Then followed by that, you can see everyday people around you playing sports. And some people used to walk out of campus, go for uh, lunch or dinner with your friends outside. Uh, just make sure you just, girls have to get back by seven, boys make sure they get back by 8.30 max. So all these things during my first year, I understood how it works. Not do not test the limits, just know how it works. During my second year, I got close to my number of seniors. So they introduced me to a lot of new things. Uh, with respect to how my second year worked is, uh, during the second year, I got introduced to robotics club. So uh, at the time, I didn't know there was a club like this because uh, they were not too much involved in it. So during my second year, I got into robotics club. The faculty dragged me along with them and it's like, there's a club like this, you should come and join since you're much interested in robotics. So thanks to that, I joined the club. Then uh, at the same time, also due to a few of my seniors, I joined uh, Designo, which is for SMBA school. Uh, now it's SMEC. So uh, since I'm a mechanical guy, Designo was one of the core things. I used to, I was working with them. So over here, I got to know a lot of my own batchmates, my seniors, and how it works, how the central committee works, how each of the own school works. So all of this kind of knowledge I gained from there. Uh, it was a good exposure as well. Then another thing is uh, during my second year, winter semester, there were club elections. So I just gave my name randomly with no hope because I just joined the club and there were many people before me. I just joined, I just joined very randomly and uh, I just I, uh, I was just stood for president. I don't know how I got even elected. People just choose me. So that was my first time taking on the role of responsibility. So that's why it started. So becoming the head of robotics club, um, the amount of pressure it tolls up, uh, it maximizes to be very honest. Because when you're becoming a club in charge, you have to think about number of events you're conducting, you have to think about how to improvise your students who have been getting under you. Then you have to understand how the politics works with other clubs and in your own club as well. Then follow that, how you have to make sure that your faculty coordinator is in the same page with you. Uh, make sure you don't get on the wrong side of him. So uh, that's how it. That's all I understood in my second year, and uh, most of the other club presidents were third years. So again, I was the youngest one over there. So with respect to that, uh, they gave me a lot of advice, and sometimes they give me wrong advice as well. It just happens. But yes, so I didn't make sure that I stick to that. But after that, um, during my third year, uh, I did a national level event, Robotrix, in campus. I started it off along with uh, All India Robotic Council. So that was the first event I conducted. That was a lot of 
knows and yes from the management. So I have to deal with BIT management, I have to deal with SWC. So again, a uh, lot of new things I learned, how to handle faculties, how to handle management. Then uh, after that, uh, Dizano, uh, no, after that I was VIT CMUN, yes. I took part in one VIT CMUN. So I was an organizer for that, the sponsorship team. Then um, during my time also was part of uh, VTeach. So I went around to a nearby school, top students. It was quite fun, relaxing. It's like a break out of studies. You can go over there, have fun with them, then come back to campus. So it was like that. Then I also had my own dance team in camp. I was part of Mysterious first. Then later on, uh, once my seniors left, I formed my own dance team in college. So uh, it was Havoc. So they were still there. It was like a private team, not part of dance club, but yes. You were there. Then after that, uh, so these were like passions. Then again, next year, Dizano came and I was nominated for overall head. So I took up the post. Uh, over there, they asked me a few questions. They said I was overconfident. They said, how were I able to manage all these things? So I was able to an answer them very truthfully and honestly. And they like my frankness. So the, those uh, I joined four, four to five people of my own batchmates. We ran the thing successfully, even though we didn't win the trophy. Uh, in the end, but we still did well. Then uh, after after design, oh, I needed a change because I felt I was focusing on management too much. I left my technical th things behind. And so I uh, went back. I uh, tried to, you know, form my own team. So that's how Dreadnought Robotics came to the picture. So when I formed my own team, again, there was a lot of rules and regulations I had to follow. Other teams have to welcome us. And um, sometimes they don't like it as well. So it happens as, as much yes or no again. Then once all the approval process was done, then uh, I took I formed my own team. Then uh, we had our own garage. We had to set up the garage. We had to start recruiting people. So again, uh, since I've been sitting a number of interviews during my time frame of Robotics Club, design and all that stuff. So recruiting people for my own team was kind of good enough. And when I started, I had, a, I had a very clear idea because since I've worked in all the different sectors of this university, uh, management has to be a top notch. That was my main perspective. So I focus on that and that way I impress a number of people in my team and the outsides. And technical wise, I took them out for competitions. Much exposure I can give them, I gave them. Even though we lost, even though we didn't win, doesn't matter, but we still did in the end. And right now also they're going well. I Right now they're also working in a project with me. Like I said, I talked my current company. I got off a project. I approached them. Then they were like, sure, why not? So I joined with them. Now we're doing this project for the company. Yeah, so there are so many clubs and one is supposed to manage the CGPA as well. So how were you managing all these things in the campus? I'm a bad person to ask this question, but yes. Uh, my CGPA during my end of the year was 7.35 and end of my four years. And um, since I was more outside of the class than inside, uh, not more of an academician, but yes, I, I like doing, doing things practically than sitting in the class to theory lectures. So I was most out of the class. And uh, I used to, they used to say that I used to live in my ODC in my thirties and fourth years. So it was like that. Uh, and um, Somehow, in the end, I managed to clear all my subjects and I got a very decent grade. And thankfully, in off-campus placements, they didn't care about grade, but they care about the more practical knowledge you have. So uh, if you ask me about whether if you're having a high grade is, is a really good thing for you, I would say, yes, why not? If you're asking me if you have a low grade, I would say, be like me, be more practical in whatever you're doing, have more knowledge, technical knowledge and more skills in hand. If you're also good in management, it's more like a thumbs up for you. Because if, if you compare with the guy who has only knowledge and compare with the guy who has more technical experience on the field, the company will prefer the guy with more technical experience. Because, like I said, they don't have to teach him more stuff. He knows how to do the job and he knows how this company works. So that's the difference here. Yeah, so I'd like to tell the audience first that we are doing this thing on Instagram called Ask a Question Monday. So you can put any questions that you have and we'll ask them in the next episodes of Placement Talks. So now we've given you some questions so you can answer those questions. All right, so I'm having a look at the questions. So I will answer them much to my capability. Okay, so... What, uh, when should we start pursuing internships and what are the skills required? Okay, so like I said, internships, you can start whenever you want. It doesn't have a required time or date. 
uh, I started my second year. Some people started in their first year. Then, but make sure that you complete a minimum of one six months internship. That's more important before you join any company. Why? Because you can talk a lot about the experience you have on the field when you have no compared to have nothing in hand and when you have some kind of internship in hand and they are they are trying to get to into your technical knowledge. You can start from here. See, I have worked in this company and all these things I've learned from there. So you can tell them like something like this, and this will at least keep their uh, interest and they'll focus on your internship point and they'll understand that okay, this is where your strengths are, and this will help you a lot more in clearing the interviews. And the skills required, like I said, depending upon the particular field you want to enter, choose your genre. Like myself, I choose defense. So choose your particular genre. Then once you're inside, choose the exact area I want to work in, the specialization. For me, it was security surveillance. It was the main thing for me. So on that, my other area of work was robotics. So how I integrate them both. So always choose your genre, your specialization, and how you want to deliver it. That's the most important thing. Once you are true with this, then choosing the right company or right part will be more easier for you. What should be the route to get super dream placement? All right. I really not know about VAT standards of how they choose dream, super dream or uh, normal companies. All right. Uh, my companies, whichever I got the offer from, most of them was around the range of 18 to 24 or 26, the average range. And uh, all of them are international companies. I didn't, like I said, I didn't see for any local companies or Indian companies. So in Singapore, uh, when I applied for a job, um, depending upon uh, the requirements, each co each country, yes, I forgot to tell this, each country has their own requirement. It's not like as if you can just jump to a company and get their placements. Uh, when you come here, you have to think about your housing expense, your living expense, and your food, your expenditure, your travel expenditure. This expenditure I'm talking about is from India to whichever country you want to go. Travel expenditure is within the country, reach your company. So all of things matters. Even though it's a very big company, they're giving you a very low amount of salary, which is still lower than your amount of all this number of things are just not good for the company. If not, then they offer you a very good salary or equal salary, then you can still go and try for it. Nothing wrong in there. Every personal, they sometimes, some people would refer to work in a company for six months or nine months or a year or a year and a half. Some people jump companies within six months or nine months to get the amount of exposure. So there's two, two kind of categories as well. And for example, in Singapore, it's very frank, uh, the number of uh, people who in Singapore, companies, they prefer more Singaporeans and PR compared to uh, international people coming here. Why is that is because um, there has been a quota here that 60% of the companies, companies employees has to be Singaporeans and PR and 40% can be from other countries. If they don't fill the 60% quota, they can't take the 40% quota into account. So there's all these things here. Why I do that is because each country has to give their own talents a chance to work in the company. They can't let them go out to different countries. So that's why in Singapore, they have it like that. In many countries, likewise, they have their own set of rules and regulations for a company to choose or recruit people. So you have to take this all into consideration. But like I said, once you're looking at a company, a specific company you want to work at, how should one go about to get the most out of their four years of college life, including studies, social interaction, hackathons, and internship? Okay, so I'm a workaholic, to be very honest. So uh, if, I, if I go to the hostel at around 8 a.m. in the morning or 9 a.m. in the morning, uh, then I used to come back around 11 or 12 p.m. Uh, so during my college life, um, I tried to explore more, uh, even though at the expense of my own health, I do this. So I, I suggest you guys want to do it. But um, Managing studies, just make sure you go to the class. Just make sure you have your minimum attendance at least. Then in interaction-based, uh, join clubs, join chapters, join teams, uh, understand how they work. Maybe one day you can land up in a high position, which will boost your resume as well. Uh, the amount of interest you put inside whatever you're doing matters. It just, it's not such that, okay, if I join this much of things, I can get a company. No, how much input you have given in that one particular club also matters. You just can't say namesake, I was part of this. You have to say, okay, in this club, I've done this amount of work. So at least the club recognizes you. Then it's a different perspective. Then for hackathons, um, go for it. Nothing wrong in that. Even if you win or you don't win, you still learn a valuable experience. Whenever I go for competitions or hackathons, this is why I tell my other teammates as well. Look at how they're presenting. Look exactly what kind of thing they're going to deliver. What kind of software they're using. So all these things you can learn from them. 
even though all these things may not be taught in class or by your classmates, you can still learn it from other people because they are working on it, to be very honest. And this can help you out to learn more about that particular thing. And when you go for another hackathon, you can use this particular skill over there. And internships, I just told about that. So if you talk about college life, just make sure you make a full use of it. Uh, some people think that I can wait till the third year or my final year to, you know what, just sit for placements. I'm just going to focus on my studies and all that stuff. If you have a little of something to give or something to share among, then all of these things has to come as a picture. It has to be complete. So just don't leave anything be, uh, beyond and regret about it later. Right. So now we've reached the end of the episode. And last thing that I want to ask you is, do you want to give any advice to the juniors? Advice to juniors. Never take advice from seniors. Okay. To, be very, to be very honest, uh, each, each person have their own personality trait. Each person have their own number of skills. If you look up at someone else and think that, oh my God, this guy is doing well. Oh my God, this guy is doing bad. I'm better than him. It's not going to help you out. In, in the complete thing, it's just going to be you and you and you till the end. And uh, when you think about all the other stuff, then that's where you'll get a lot of unwanted ideas and unnecessary things. So as I say, don't take anyone's advice seriously. You can keep them in mind. You just stick and focus on your same path. And whatever in the end, you still have to get a job. There's nothing wrong with that. Or you'll go for masters. So like I said, just do whatever you want to do. Don't worry about anything else. Just make sure you don't get on the wrong side of things. But always stick to what you want to deliver. There should be more enough. Thank you so much, Arvind. It was a really informative session. And I'm sure all our viewers are going to love this episode. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much.